Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to cover a couple of examples from the chapter five. So the first example is following. An economy produces 50 widgets and which sells for the $4 each and has a money supply $100. And we want to calculate the velocity of money. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, what kind of the equation or the theory that we need to use to find the answer. And that is the quantity equation. So which is the following, MV equals PY. So as you know, the velocity of money, so we denote the V, so we want to find the V. So the left-hand side, we have a money supply M is $100, which is given in the question, and we want to find the V. And then the right-hand side, the price is given as $4 each. And then you have the output. So in this question, we have the 50, right? So we have the one equation, one unknown, so it should be very easy. So then you can find the velocity, which is four times 50 over 100. That is 200 over 100. So you can easily find the answer. The velocity has to be two. Okay, let's move on. So the following question is fine. So the, this is the following question. An economy with a constant velocity of money has a real GDP growth of the 3% and money growth of the 7% and the real interest rate is given as 2% and we want to find the normal interest rate. So in order to find the answer, we need to use a two equation. The first, the first one is following, uh, the Fisher equation. So Fisher equation is I equals I plus pi, okay? So here we want to find the normal interest rate that is just summation of the real interest rate plus inflation rate. The real interest rate is given as a 2%, but we don't know the inflation rate, okay? So in order to find the inflation rate, we need to use a gross rate of the quantity equation. So from the MV equals PY, you can convert to the gross rate, which gives you percentage change of the money supply plus percentage change of the velocity equals percentage change of the price plus percentage change of the output. But the question says that, the velocity is constant, so this one should be zero. And then real GDP growth of the 3%, so this is a 3%. And then inflation, that's what we want to know. So the percentage of the cha percentage change of the price is same as the inflation. And then the percentage change of the money supply is a 7%. Okay? So that being said, the pi equals a seven minus three, so that you got the four. So when you plug in the pi equals four here, you can easily find the domain interest rate is a 6%. All right, so let's go to the next question. So here, suppose a country has a money demand function, this one, as we said it, and the K is a constant parameter, and then the money supply grows at 12% per year. So the percentage change of the M is a 12. And then the real income grows by 4% per year. So percentage change of the output is four. And then the first question asks you to find the, what is the average inflation rate? So how can you find it? So the same equation that we need to use percentage change of the M plus percentage change of the V equals percentage change of the uh, price plus percentage change of the output. So we want to find the inflation. But then the percentage change of the output given as four, percentage change of the M is a 12. And then the velocity, so that's a question. How can you find the uh, percentage change of the velocity? But this one should be zero. Why is that? Well, we studied that the V is a one over K, or you can say that K is a one over V. Since the K is a constant parameter, that means that the V has to be constant parameter too. So that's why I can find, I can say that the, percentage change of the velocity is a zero, okay? Then we done, we have a one equation, one unknown. So 12 equals pi plus four, so then the pi is at eight. Now the following question, if real income grows were higher, then inflation would be lower or the uh, higher? That's the equation. So the answer is a lower. Why is that? Well, if you replace the number, real income, so from the 4%, let's say that it's the increase to 6%, then what happened to the inflation? Inflation becomes a six, right? So it's a decrease. So that's why the answer is a lower. And then the last question, what is the relationship between the parameter K and the balance of money? 
well, the V equals one over K. So I think that it's better to change the order of the question. So this one should be the first one because otherwise you cannot find the answer for the A. Basically, we need to know the V equals one over K. Otherwise, we cannot find the percentage change of the velocity equals zero because if the question gives the K is a constant parameter and you can find the percentage change of velocity equals zero from this relationship, okay? Let's move to the last question here. The economy of the macro island is described by the quantity equation with the constant velocity. So the V is fixed. All residents of the macro island understand the quantity theory and use it to form their expectation of the inflation. Real income grows at a steady 2% per year. So percentage change of the output is a two. And then the nominal interest rate is a 5%. In one year, people have expected the money supply grows to uh, money supply to grow by four percent. So this is the expectation percentage change of the M. So let me put the E, four percent. But in fact, it grew by only three percent. So the actual money supply grew by three percent, but people expected four percent. Given that, what was the inflation rate? Well, you need to use the the quantity equation with the gross form, so percentage change of the M plus percentage change of the output, sorry, percentage change of the M plus percentage change of the velocity equals percentage change of the price plus percentage change of the output. So velocity is constant, this is zero. And then we want to find the inflation rate and percentage change of the output is 2%. Now, here, the left-hand side, we need to find the percentage change of the M. And then if you are using the actual money supply, it's 3% here, you plug in there, then you can find that the inflation is at 1%. That's the answer. Because of the following question asks you, what was the expected inflation rate? That means that the first question asks you to find the actual inflation rate, you need to use the actual money supply. But for question number B, you use the same equation, but now the percentage change of the M is a 4%. So then four plus zero equals a pi plus two. So then you can find the expected inflation rate has to be uh, 2%. And after that question number C, what was the X and T real interest rate? Again, you need to use a Fisher equation, I equals R plus pi, but since the question asks you to find the X and T real interest rate, you need to use uh, uh, the expected inflation rate. So the real interest rate is given as, uh, sorry, nominal interest rate is given as 5%. So the left-hand side is five. And we want to find the real interest rate R and you are using the expected inflation rate 2%, then you can find the X and T real interest rate has to be three. Okay. And then the last question, what was the X post uh, real interest rate? So the same equation, I equals R plus, the inflation, but now we are using the actual inflation rate pi. So the right left hand side is a 5% and we want to find this R, but when we are using the actual inflation rate, which we calculate from the first question A, that was a 1%, then you can find this R has to be 4%. Okay, let me stop here.